what's going on everybody it's Chris back here with another simulation this one is a, obviously a monster game the number seven Miami Hurricanes at the number one Clemson Tigers huge matchup college game day will be there and we're gonna get right into this if you like this series if you like these simulations go ahead and hit the like button and also if you could please hit the subscribe button we're doing great with the amount of support and just need to keep it going right here you're taking a look at the Miami Hurricanes this is a big game for Miami because they're looking to really establish themselves as ACC contenders. They want to be in that top 10 like they are right now. An upset would be huge for Miami, especially the way the last two games against Clemson has gone. And you guys remember that 2017 blowout at the ACC championship game. So Miami, there's some guys still on the team. They were asked about it this week. The biggest thing they said was they feel like they have a little bit more maturity with this year's group. And I think if you look up and down the roster, offensively and defensively, you do see a lot of upperclassmen as well. Starting with senior quarterback De'Ara King. And he is honestly, he is the reason why Miami's got a shot in this game. Miami's jumped out to a 3-0 record. Clemson's same record, 2-0 in the conference. So certainly a, a pivotal game for both teams as they look to stay in that top two for the ACC championship contention because there's no divisions this year. So it's going to be based on winning percent. This is obviously a big game for those teams because you don't. it's tough to take losses and, and fighting yourself back into that top two. So here we go. So that's 23. That's Cameron Harris. He's off to a good start to his se season. Had some really big games. And what stands out to me with Cameron Harris is He's really showing that ability to break loose for big runs. I think that we haven't really seen that as much in his first couple of years at Miami, but we're seeing it this year, and I think it's great for the offense. And establishing the run is certainly important in a game like this because you really want to have that balance. And Clemson's going to do everything they can to take that away. And you kind of see some of their playmakers already. They just have a, a good group of guys, a, a linebacker. You know, they've got a good defensive line again, once again, with Tyler Davis. And then the guys in the back as well making plays. So, and you see that's one of their linebackers in Venables. Skalski's there as well. Mike Jones Jr., you see him right there, number six. So a lot of good playmakers for Clemson on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of attention goes to what they do on offense with Travis and Trevor, but they certainly have a good defense as well. It's tough to score points on them, and that's and that's really what's going to take for Miami to have a have a shot at winning this game. Two touchdown underdogs. A nice pass break up there by Clemson. Fred Davis second. Freshman right there, and then Mario Goodrich, 31. He was right there as well. So D. Wiggins unable to, to come down with the catch. And I think it was good that we saw a little bit of flashes with D. in the Florida State game because he's a certainly a, a guy that's important for Miami's receivers, for their offense. With the size and speed to get downfield, make big plays, and I think, once again, this will be a big one for him even though they've got quality corners, quality defensive backs for Clemson. You know, I think it's important for D to somehow, you know, kind of get loose. Once again, really provide that balance that they're looking for. Well, let's talk about the, the Clemson offense. You see Amari Rogers right there and Frank Ladson Jr., South Dade product in his second season, highly regarded recruit. Those two guys are off to really good starts to the season. And Amari's an interesting player, just a dynamic Receiver with good size. That's that one of the best, arguably the best running back in the country, and arguably the best quarterback in the country. I think a lot of, I think that's kind of consensus. I think a lot of people feel that way. And when you have those two things, obviously, you've got a really good offense. And like I said, you're mixing in the receivers. And what stands out to me with the receivers, it does. They've got a lot of guys in that 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", range. Some, some really good sized players there. 
And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for Miami in this game is with Trevor in the passing game. And it's not to take anything away from Travis because, once again, I mentioned that balance. If, if Clemson's able to establish a balance with both guys doing well, it's certainly going to be difficult for Miami to pull it off. But, And the other thing, too, with the passing game, you know, Lawrence doesn't throw interceptions. He's went over 300 passes without an interception. Now this time he'll look to throw. Amari Carter, who's going to start alongside Bubba Bolden in this game, and they rotate the three safeties. You guys know that with Gervin Hall, who will miss the first half because of a suspension because he was ejected for targeting in the second half of the Florida State game. So they're going to roll out Carter and Bolden. And Amari talked this week about he's aware that Trevor does not throw interceptions. And a couple things that stand out to me with those practices. So he said that, but he also said, you know, they're not going into the game thinking there won't be opportunities. So from the 36 now, and the other thing is, 10. what he said was with practices, going against Derek King in practices, from the gun, Lawrence. they believe it really helps them, it helps their defense in a game like this against Trevor Lawrence, even though they're different quarterbacks. Quarterback, certainly both are really good players. And that will be interesting. I think that might be something that could help Miami in the sense that even though Trevor is a different quarterback and everything, maybe it won't be as big of a deal or as big of a, I don't know if shock's the right word, but you know, as noticeable once they get on the field because they are used to playing a quality quarterback. Once again, different styles. Both quarterbacks can run, just different sizes, obviously, too. Trevor at 6'6", the ability to run. And then defensive coordinator there, Blake, Blake Baker, is certainly aware of the running ability. With Lawrence, and one thing he said with that is he just has that ability to take off and run with it. And Manny Diaz mentioned it, too. But just if the play breaks down, but he has the ability and the speed to really break long runs, and they saw that last year. The 60, 70 yard run, something like that, but just he has that speed. Whereas Derek, you know, in that 5, 10, 5, 11 mold. Also with good speed. And both quarterbacks, it's just a huge matchup. It's a lot of fun seeing two quarterbacks go at it, and Derek was asked about it quite a bit this week. And he kind of he kind of like stopped the question. It's like, well, I'm not going against Trevor, and he's not. But you understand, it is a showdown between two of the nation's best quarterbacks, and both of them are going to have to play well in this game, particularly with the Eric. I say that because a lot rides the offense rides on the Eric. Things are able to do. There's Bubba Bolden. Bubba's going to be a, a key player for Miami's defense because he's played so well to start the season and you need him to rise this game even more or play at a really high level in a game like this. You see Powell right there. Powell's another good receiver for the Tigers. And, and Bubba's going to have to be well. He's going to have to play well in coverage. I think that's the biggest thing with him. And really help out on these bigger receivers once they get the ball in their hands to help with tackles, those kind of things. And it's not to say, I mean, DJ Ivy and Albledge Jr., top corners for Miami, have good size. But just that additional help, they're going to make sure that they're, they're not always in one on one situations on tackles. There's an example right there. That's JC Chalk. That's a tight end. They've got tight ends as well. But I think the biggest thing is they're, they're going to want to get the ball to their... So Chalk's dealing with a little injury here. But they're going to want to get the ball to the receivers. That's the biggest thing. And then obviously with the running game. Travis certainly has the ability to have a monster game anytime he steps on the field. And Miami's defense, particularly their linebackers, will have to step up. As Zach McLeod, Bradley Jennings Jr., those are the top two linebackers for Miami. And then they mix in the striker with Gilbert Frierson. 
That's a huge play by Jalen Phillips. You talk about big time players wanting to step up in a game like this. Jalen Phillips is one of those guys. There's no question Miami's best players are going to have to play well on both sides of the ball. Jalen's got very good size and speed. Once again, he saw flashes in that Florida State game. Had to leave early on the celebration. Blake Baker joked around that hopefully they don't. You know, we talked about guys that play with emotion, and they do so want that. They, he just joked around that hopefully they don't kick a helmet across the field this time around. In reference to Jalen's penalty against Florida State, and he had to leave the game early, but he will be back. It's a different type of ejection than on target. So Jalen, it's definitely good to see him get the sack in this simulation. You hope you catch the because that's something you hope to see in Saturday's game. From the gun on third down, Lawrence. There's Amari Carter. The and he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Powell with another catch there. Six yards in the first down. That throw's not going to get him a whole lot. And in regards to the safety matter. situation, they, and they have been rotating guys with Amari, Bubba, and Gervin, like I mentioned. However, like with this game, and Brian Ballum, the freshman, will be that number three safety for the first half. And while they like the things that he's done, I expect Amari and, Ger or Amari and Bubba to play the majority of the first half. And honestly, in the second half, I do expect those two to still be the main two in terms of playing time because I think for a guy like Gervin, I think he can provide some relief. I think expecting him to have a really good game jumping in in the middle of the game is tough. It's tough for an athlete to do that. I think he can contribute. I just I just think that assuming everything is going okay with those two safeties, they will kind of ride those guys out for the game a majority of the way. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a Even though Gervin has been a guy that they certainly like back there. So here we go. So Miami's defense From looking to stay Lawrence. tight right there. Is that okay? That's a good tackle. Prevents the touchdown. That's Galloway. That's one of their tight ends. DJ Ivy with a nice tackle. And you see Trevor Lawrence. And I know it's just a simulation, but you do see his arm strength in this game. He's got a high rating there, and I think you see it. I think that's going to be what you're going to see, maybe a little bit different in the other quarterbacks Miami has faced. Is Trevor has the ability to really get the ball downfield with his arm. And he's got guys that can catch the ball. I mentioned the receivers, but you see it right there with the tight end. So first and goal here from the two. Miami will certainly take that delay again. And when Derek, Derek King was talking about Trevor, he said he's watched him play, he watched him last year. He likes to watch good quarterbacks all across the country pick up on things. Just seems like a you know a fan of the game. And then he said he watched Trevor earlier in the season when against Wake Forest and made a throw. He was really impressed by him. A delay of game, a and he said he's going to be the first pick in the draft. So there's certainly a lot of respect there. Trevor gets out there. That's a nice tackle right there. It looked like Rodgers might have had the advantage and the ability to go ahead and get in the end zone, but Corey Couch comes down with a tackle. Corey's their third corner, and Corey's a big one because he's going to have to play well because once again, talk about the safety situation, the corner situation is similar in the sense that they go with three corners, and then after the third corner is a freshman, and they. They want to just stick with those main three. Just like in the first half, they want to stay with the main two safeties. And just, again, they like what they've seen from the freshmen, but just for this game... So third and goal. A field goal would be a letdown. 
can they convert now on third and goal? Operating from the gun, Lawrence. There's a touchdown. So Clemson's on the board. DJ has been on a play. That's Frank Ladson Jr. DJ Ivy also went to South Dade. And Latson certainly with his ability at 6'3, put it he's put on more weight than maybe what you guys remember from in high school. He's at 205 now. But he's one of those guys that has the ability to use his speed with a big play downfield, but also you see there. Which is another ability he has, which with a quick slant pass over the middle. And, and just seeing that drive, and, and Manny Diaz mentioned that this week, third down and red zone. And you saw it right there, third down conversion for Clemson, gets a touchdown while in the red zone. And he said those are going to be big keys for this game. And one of the things that stands out to me when he says that is, when you look at Miami's numbers at third down and red zone, offense and defense, they are better, noticeably better in almost in three of those four categories. One of them, it's slightly uh, worse than the, where they were last year in terms of where they rank in the ACC. But basically, Miami's been much better in those categories this year. The and certainly, the field, and Manny's right. It away. will come down to that. It, it is important. You don't want to get stuck in these bad forward. situations, you know, those three for 12s from third down, you know, things like that where it's really yeah, drives are stalling. More, is, Miami's done a good job of getting touchdowns when they get into the red zone. They'd like to keep that up. Once again, it'll, certainly it'll be difficult because Clemson now, does have a good defense that does not have a lot of weaknesses because, again, they've got a lot of guys returning at each unit that makes them tough. And Timmy right there, there on that tackle, so that's a good play by them. I think you guys see, but Xavier Thomas, I went ahead and included him in the game. Sounds like he's questionable to play. It's a very highly regarded defensive end, defensive lineman for them. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes But I went ahead and include him in the game. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. But I tried to make all the other adjustments with the depth chart, particularly with Miami. I went ahead and put Zion Nelson at left tackle because he did start up there last week. So that's a noticeable one. Once again, Gervin Hall out for the first half, so I made that move. And I think another position to look at for the game, and Manny Diaz was non-committal at punt return. Mark Pope has been their top guy at punt returner through the first three games, but he's been shaky. Gervin Hall's the backup. Like I said, Gervin Hall's out. The third stringer is freshman Xavier Restrepo. He finally got in there last week against Florida State, fielded his a punt, returned it eight yards. Solid game. But I asked Xavier about being a punt returner, and he just said he's done it all his whole life, and it's just something he feels really comfortable doing. And I think that's important because I think that position is so tough to find a quality returner because it's not just, a, to me, it's not just about athleticism, quickness, and things like that. But there's a lot of decisions that have to be made there. And you're, it's a little bit different. Like you feel, you can certainly feel a little out of your element if it's not something you feel totally comfortable with. And I would not be surprised to see Restrepo in there against Clemson because, once again, while Manny said that they're backing Mark Pope, but he wasn't. When asked about it, he said, "Well, because the depth chart got released on Monday, it's more, more so a formality." But he said, "Our depth chart on Monday isn't necessarily the one we'll use for the game," and so. He definitely said that they're looking at options, and I would not be surprised if they go ahead and make that move. Even though Xavier's a freshman, but we'll see. The stop for no gain brings up second and ten. And looking at the uniforms, Miami did announce they are wearing the white jerseys with their green pants. And whenever that combination comes up, I always like that black sock, black 
so I, I made sure to do that and then I expect Clemson to go with their business suit which is the orange jersey is the white pants although when looking at these uniforms and taking a look at the purple ones I almost want to include that in this simulation because their purples are so unique and they don't wear them very often and I thought about making that move and who knows it is game day will be there national TV who knows maybe they'll want to go with a splash there I think one of the things that'll be interesting and I didn't include this in the simulation just because I think just for a viewing perspective but I didn't include rain you know this certainly could be a factor in the game it could be a heavy rain it could be you know just it could be a light rain it could have rained a little bit before the game with a wet field it's just something to watch for. But I did leave that realistic possibility off the game now. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. Oh my goodness. Lawrence with the fumble. So Galloway scoops it up. I think it was I mean they announced fumble, but was he down? It's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is this a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Oh, I think he was down, but still, you like to see the ball loose. Miami definitely, I mentioned the turnover, you know, with the interceptions earlier. Just haven't happened for Trevor. And they would certainly like to create some sort of turnover, break out the turnover chain in this big game. There's a lot of key stats that have been out there with Clemson and, and their win streak in the ACC and a lot of the things that Miami will definitely need to do in the first half. Clemson's been really good either when they score first or if they're leading at halftime. All of their stats are extremely favorable for Clemson and that makes sense for winning teams. But if you want to look for trends that maybe Miami's in this game, that they've got a shot at the upset, look for that. Look for that in the first half. Can they get an early lead? Can they have it, not just the early lead, but can they have a strong first half? Can they do things to put Clemson a little bit off their game, something they're not used to doing, which they're not used to trailing, particularly in the ACC games, particularly against Miami. Because if you remember that game before that, the last time they faced each other was Al Golden's final game there. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. In 2010, it was 58-0. So, certainly Miami has to do a lot, particularly early in my opinion, to, to really show that they belong in this game. And one of the things that D.R. King mentioned this week was he understands where Clemson is as a program, and he believes that Miami, you know, deserves to be in this game. So we'll see, and I think early is a very important for Miami, even though some of the players have talked about being a more mature team. I just think the results of playing well early can really help a team stay confident and stay feeling like they have a shot at this. So looking at this game, Clemson's up 10-0. That's good defense for Miami to hold them to a field goal, but 348 left. You'd like to see the Miami offense get something going. Get a score at least going into halftime. It's a nice return now. That's a solid return. By Mark Pope. And I do expect... So Pope's down with a little bit of an injury. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully, you know, if you guys have watched the other simulations that I've been able to put together this season, oh, they're testing them out. What is going on with these injuries? This is an exhibition game. About set for Throwing out injuries like that. Miami just they unable to get things going. But the, one of the things that you guys have seen from doing this, that there are some things that pop up in the game. So hopefully nothing happens with Mark Pope. This is Derek King. Just the three pass attempts for one yard. That's an odd stat line. Two for three for one yard. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one. Basically, right? Clemson's just had the ball most of the time here. First play, the drive goes the Such wrong a key way. drive. Here's and that's the one thing Miami's done really well at this year. 
obviously you see the 3 0 record, but one of the things that they've done is when teams score, they have done a really good job at responding. And that's an important trait for a team, especially in a big game, because Clemson will score points. And Miami cannot get down. They're going to have to show what they've shown throughout the year and respond. And I think, to me, if they do that, I think that can breed confidence in, okay, we've done it against the other teams, and now we're able to do it against Clemson. So we'll see if that, that will be it. A thing as well. I mentioned the early, the good start, the good first half. Obviously, you want to make sure you have that balance. I think the balance is key because I don't think one area of Miami's attack, of passing or rushing, is good enough to rely on that for a full game against the defense, against a team like Clemson. I think they're going to, to win this game, they're going to have to be able to do both. I don't think it's one of those things where Miami has a really good passing attack and if they just do that, they'll be fine, or running attack. I just think that with the way things have been, I think it's going to be important for them to be able to do both. Keep Clemson on its toes, convert red zone opportunities into touchdowns and be able to match Clemson, to because I do field. expect Clemson to score. I do expect thing. Clemson to particularly be able to pass the ball. I think that's going to be the big thing. But certainly, that running attack for Clemson is going to be tough as well, because once again, Travis has the ability to reel off big plays at any moment. And I think Miami at linebacker, even though Baker, Blake Baker has talked about his confidence, Okay, this is difficult. Trevor Lawrence, 12 for 13. 12 for 13. That reminds me of the Dynasty series when we played Clemson. I think you guys remember that. If you watched this, if you watched that series, you remember that game. It felt like Trevor was doing one of those, those high percentage. And he's coming into this game completing 73% of his passes. So to see a high completion percent is not a shock. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. And it seems like maybe the bend but break, bend but don't break mantra couldn't be more important in a game like this because if Trevor is getting into a roll, moving the ball up and down the field. You know, when it does come down to those tight spots in the red zone with the shorter field, maybe that's the opportunity for Miami to, to hold on there. But before they get to that, they've just got to make sure they don't give up that big play. And here's the big play right there. And Kyle is just having a monster game for Clemson. And it's not a big surprise to see one of their guys have a good game because I think a lot of their receivers have the capabilities. You saw Ladson with the touchdown earlier, but I do think they have multiple guys that have the potential. And I think that's going to be the tough, tough spot with Miami's pass defense is matching those guys one for one with, with their corners matched up against their receivers. Okay, we'll take that every day. We will take that all the time. It looked like it was going to be a completion. So this game has been very interesting. This is not the first half Miami would want in the game. Not only are they blanked, but they just don't have any momentum going with their offense. Got a minute and a half left here. Got to look to hold him to a field goal. Or, you know, right here, the ball's on the 42. That's going to be a long... It's going to be too long for a field goal, most likely. So if they get a stop here, force a punt. Maybe get some momentum. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back incompletions. 
Oh my goodness, so Rodgers with a nice juke move, but Zach McLeod on a stop. I asked Zach a question this week. I asked him about his preparation for Clemson. I was a little interested in seeing about the guys, and I asked Amari the same thing just to see if different guys were doing different things. But my question to Zach was, you know, so the schedule, Clemson pops up on the schedule, the revised schedule. The initial schedule, they wouldn't have faced Clemson this year. The revised schedule, Clemson added. I asked Zach when he started preparing for him, and this, you know, watching film on Clemson. Because, you know, if you're, I know in the spring that the staff was really working on um, facing another guy. I, just looking here. So this is 53 yards here. My goodness. Oh, that's way short. Oh, mine is going to get good field position here. Field position here. But I, I do know that they were looking at teams. I didn't know if they were looking at Clemson specifically. But maybe that they were. I was curious. Maybe they had watched Clemson because... You know, the coaching staff has also mentioned Clemson. Look, Clemson is the standard for the ACC. So maybe they have been watching Clemson. Maybe if they thought that if they faced them in the ACC title game, you know, maybe they would just go ahead and start looking at stuff. Maybe individually, not a big team thing. But anyways, my point with all that is Zach said he, that he had in and really just um, started looking at them leading up to the game. You know, Miami has had a bye week to prepare. And Amari Carter said the same thing. Oh my goodness, that's a huge throw. That is a huge play by De'Ara King. Mike Harley showing that speed to be able to get downfield. That was great by De'Ara to really throw it in there, a little pocket. Just a monster play there. And then Harley catches it outside the 30 and takes it all the way down inside the five. And that might be a key for Miami as well, these explosive plays to be able to reel off the big play. You saw it in the run game, all three running backs that have played, been in that mix, have reeled off big runs, and, and to be able to do that in this game would be huge. So Miami's got a shot to get on the board here. Just like that, look at Miami. Look at the Miami Hurricanes, Brevin Jordan. He has scored a touchdown in each of the first three games. And he just goes and sits right in front of Derek. Throw him right, right in front of him. Safety there. So good play by Miami. That's crazy. They were. It was not looking good for him. And then all of a sudden, the missed field goal. The huge play by Harley. And the nice throw and catch there. So Miami only down 10-7. Take that good peel and, and take the 64 yards and only 17 over. seconds. They, got it here. they did indeed a lot of football, full half to be played. Scoring summary. And Brevin's going to certainly be a big part of this one. And I think if you're looking at it, and, and Clemson knows about Brevin Jordan, leads the team in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. They know he is a focal point of the offense. De'Aaron King calls him and backup Will Mallory a security blanket. Clemson knows that they've got linebackers that have the ability to, to provide coverage. It will be interesting to watch how they decide to cover Brevin and so if Miami can counter because, again, I think Clemson's going to do everything they can to try to take Brevin away. And like Eric said, it's, uh, it's their responsibility to get him the ball. Even though Clemson's going to do whatever they can to take him away. So I think that's going to be something to watch for. Watch how they guard Brevin. If they if they maybe have an underneath player, almost like a spy, just to take that extra eyes onto Brevin and just make sure they know where nine is at all times. And it's not a surprise, too, because his numbers are so productive. In a team, you know, with the tight end position in general, you're able to kind of, you might be able to make some adjustments to take him away. And I think that's why the receivers have to play well this game. Because if they do do something with Brevin, they've got to make sure they are providing those catches on the outside. So there we go, halftime already. Shout out to everybody that is following along, showing your support. If you haven't yet, now would be a great time to hit the like button and subscribe. Or maybe you want more coverage of the Miami Hurricanes. You can always subscribe to the InsideTheU.com.
VIP subscription. Get plenty of information there as well. Fast first half, but once again, just to really appreciate everybody for for watching this and showing your support. You know, I think Miami has to feel good if they are within three points of the game. I think that's going to be a big part because, once again, the last two times they've played each other, they've been blown out of the building. So staying close, even if you're down, I think is going to be a good sign. You want to be able to do something in the first half to really say that you're in this game, even if you're down. And there will be fans in the stands, but not nearly as many. It won't be a capacity crowd. Just something to pay attention to in terms of, I mentioned this, and at some point I, I will look this up, but I kind of thought this way all season long where the road team, particularly an underdog, having a little bit better of a shot because the crowds won't be as loud and disruptive and the home teams won't be able to use that momentum as much as they would with a full capacity crowd. And so I just kind of wonder what the splits will be. I've been kind of waiting a few weeks to see if that's actually true or if there's really no difference and that the splits still favor the home crowd, the home teams about the same as a typical year. But we'll see. And I think that's just something to watch for in this game. Although I do remember a coach saying this week where just felt like once the game gets going, you, you don't really um, you kind of block things out and you kind of just play. And I, I do think that happens to a, to a certain extent because I certainly believe that the crowd does make a difference at times there. So nice play by John Ford, 96. And then Couch finishes off. So Ford's a very interesting player. A lot of discussion on our message boards about John Ford and if he's being productive enough or if they should go with Jared Harrison Hunt, a redshirt freshman who has showed flashes. To me, I feel like with Jared, I really like his abilities. I think he's got good quickness. Like I said, the good flashes right there. They're just different players with Ford. Ford's a bigger player. And to me, I like that combination with the one big defensive tackle and then another one with that, and that speed quickness mold, if that makes sense. And I think Silvera's more of that, whereas Ford has the size along with Miller. And I just think kind of mixing that up a little bit. But once again, certainly Ford has to play well. It's important that he does because of those reasons. And I just think with Jared, if you're able to just maximize what he's able to do right now in his role, I think that'd be a good sign. But if moves need to be made, then we'll see. I do find that interesting, though, just in saying that, that this staff really does look, you know, just looking at the depth chart and who they like to play, they really like the more veteran players. And I, and I say that because if you look at all positions, it's, it's kind of just the older upperclassmen holding on to spots at many different positions. I think the one thing that you have to look for to also, because even if Miami's feeling good about how they're playing in a half or a quarter or certain drives, Clemson has the ability, and they've shown it. They've already shown it this season, but just what they've been able to do over the years, that ability to stay a threat to break things open. They can put touchdowns on the board quickly. They can turn things in a hurry, even with their defense. And I think that'll just be something where Miami just has to stay locked in, regardless of what the score is. This is good for Miami right here with the Etienne. I think it's at 11 carries, 28 yards, and stopped right there by Bolden. And I do think there's a lot of pressure on guys like Bolden, the guys that they're better players that have to play well. Quincy Roche is another one. Haven't even mentioned him yet this year, this game. But he's a guy that I think has to play well in this game. Provides some pressure on the edge, but also in the run game as well. 
And this is right down the middle. So Clemson knocks down the field goal there. They had a long one earlier. Over 50 yards missed. So 13 to 7 Clemson. Have to feel good if you're Miami. You hold Clemson to just the one touchdown so far. Two field goals that have been made. And then one that have been missed. And they're kind of right there, even though. Clemson's put together three scoring drives. And I've asked this before, but because there is a lot of discussion with the return game with who they should put in, but let me know at this point, you know, three games in, or maybe, you know, for this big game, who would you put in as a top two kick returners and as a primary punt returner? Would you like to see some moves made? I've mentioned... Xavier Restrepo, maybe there's another guy that you would like. Maybe in the kick return game. Maybe it's a Keyshawn Smith with his speed. Maybe you'd like to see him get in there. And maybe you'd like to see either John, Jalen, Jalen Knighton or Don Cheney Jr., either one of those two guys or, or both as the kick returners. As well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is a huge play. So, Deere King is letting it fly. He had that big throw to Mike Harley in the second quarter, and now D. Wiggins mentioned him earlier. He needed to have a big performance. That's just a monster catch over 50 yards on that play. That's Davis in coverage, number two. Such a huge play right there. And maybe that's what's going to have to take with Miami. If they're not able to grind out drives, then that finally hitting on those deep plays will be key. So Miami right here at the 15. My goodness, if Miami can get a touchdown here, they might be in position to pull off this upset. You see the passing numbers. So Lawrence over 170 yards. Keeney at around 70. I think that's what the number. It's got to be more than that because that was over 50, and then the Harley catch. So maybe I read that wrong. So Dierig on the run. Oh my goodness. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen that yet this game. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. And what strikes me about Dierick is just with his leadership, he, and I think you're going to see this all season long, he's going to be a guy that just keeps coming, just keeps fighting, just keeps staying the course. I don't see him as a guy that will get rattled regardless of how things are going. And I think he's just going to keep being a steady performer capable of leading an offense or capable of striking on big plays throughout the game. It's a tough, tough, tough defense by Clemson. Cameron Harris only into one yard already or so far. We're not going to let him beat us. Well, that's exactly what's happened here. They've lived up to that. It's certainly going to be a challenge if Miami cannot get the running game going. Also, another thing that hasn't happened yet this year is the offensive line has not been credited with giving up a sack. Here's a second and seven. Oh, my goodness. Look at the Miami Hurricanes. Once again, Mike Harley with the catch. So he goes over the middle. He's been good in the slot. He likes to play that position. And you see him right there, slot right over the middle. It just gets by him right there. Creates that separation and then comes down with the catch. And Miami is certainly threatening here. Kendrick, I see Kendrick, number one. He's certainly a good cornerback, but he was busy covering another guy, and now Miami is... Is in position the extra point try forthcoming. to take the lead here, Jose Borgales. And that one puts them on so Miami goes up once third. again. Big plays, striking with big plays. So that drive span five plays. It's and still, you know, just midway through the third down. quarter here, but it's good to see Miami respond and and play well. And mention Borgales. You know, he's a guy that going into a game like this. 
you know, with field goals, you know, points being at a premium, you need him to make all of his opportunities. And also the thing that we saw earlier in the year, which I thought was so big, I'm really big on proven results in a season as you build on throughout the year. And, and with Jose coming through with the big, long field goals already this year with the 57, which tied the school record with two other guys. But doing that early kind of sets the tone a little bit. It, it, it establishes that trust early. And I think going into a game like this, not only does he have the opportunity to, you know, that they need him to take advantage of the opportunities he does get, I think he could have some opportunities at some long field goal opportunities because he has shown that he can do it. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there. Trevor's the number, so 17-21. solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that he's you're He's just a really well tough quarterback to go against because mistakes. of his arm. You mentioned judged. in his running ability. We haven't seen it quite it in this game, but no so far. Like that. I just want he's either. certainly willing and able to do it, and I think Miami definitely needs to make sure that they're paying attention to that. That aspect as well, which makes things a little bit difficult because once again you're looking at the receiving targets that they have. The multiple guys they are the running game of Travis. And then you've got to worry about what Trevor can do with his legs, and I think you're just the combination of everything is what makes them the top break team in the country right now. Lawrence. Also, too, if you guys want to drop in, let me know what you your score predictions. What do you think is going to happen in the game? What do you think the score will be? I know there will be some Clemson fans watching this, so shout out to you guys for showing their support of your team. But let me know, both teams, either way, anybody, or if you're just a college football fan, let me know what you think the score will be. And I'll know who the diehard fans are dropping the predictions because... This is the first time I've mentioned it, so if I start seeing some predictions roll through, I'll be knowing that you are following this game all the way through and through late here in the third quarter. The score predictions will be for the diehard fans for sure. But I am curious what you think it will be, and if Miami is going to win the game, I'm very curious to see those scores in the sense how many points you think Clemson will score or how many points you think Miami will need to score. So while Trevor Lawrence is not throwing interceptions, he's doing well, not turning the ball over. Jalen Phillips gets his second sack of the game. That is huge for Miami. You would love to see that happen in Saturday's game for a Miami fan because being able to get him on the ground and create some negative plays in the offense, you feel like there's not going to be a lot of opportunities for that. You know, good running backs really do a good job of, of either getting to the line of scrimmage when things get collapsed or falling forward for even just two to three yards is such a big thing where really avoiding those negative rushing rushes. And I think if you look at really good running backs in a game or a season, they don't have a lot of those negative runs. So they do a good job even if a play breaks down. So my point is there might not be a lot of opportunity for negative plays in this game. And so to come up with sacks would definitely be huge better execution and done with a lot of enthusiasm wasn't it absolutely they saw it all the way because you guys know the stats you know how and cause a nice especially if you get that yardage. that sack on first down or second down, you know how important that is for the rest of the drive it makes it difficult for an offense the the numbers go down dramatically the, the percent the percentage down. chance of getting a first down on that drive drop tre tremendously if you're able to get that negative play And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So we'll see. So look at this. Miami's up 14 13 late in the third quarter. They've been able to hold. They got a stop right there. And when you start plotting for this drive, and maybe that's something you'll see. You see the Miami offense respond to touchdowns. And maybe this would be good for the defense if they can do this where it's reverse, where Miami gets a touchdown and then they, they follow that up with a stop. And I think that would be certainly just as important. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that. So Harris with a good run right there. They pick up another first down with Total yards. Clemson still out in front. Now, here's first and by ten. over 70 yards, but 
you know, Miami's got the lead here. And they go back to Harris. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. I think this will be interesting if Miami has a narrow lead going into the fourth quarter. That at some point in the fourth quarter, do you try to you know, really try to use as much clock as possible with the either run game or to keep things moving? To try to run out the clock as much as possible, or do you just keep playing? Or at what point in the fourth quarter do you start paying attention to the clock and possession? If you, once again, if you do have this lead, and I only bring that up because it does, it is that way right now with this game. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. So here we go, second and four. Oh, that's a huge play by Clemson right there. Henry on the tackle, the game, unable to get rid of the ball, unable to get a positive yard. So now it's third and nine. That's huge for Clemson. Looked like he was trying to pitch it, just couldn't get the ball out on that option. Take a look at their defense. Mention Skalski again. He's the back. On third down. For three to this point. And they're showing that balance. Miami, this you see it right there with the, the rushing attempts and the passing attempts. I asked Rhett Lashley this week about that. If he is pleased with how things are with the splits through three games into the year and the plays that they've ran, the, the tempo, because that, those two things have been so important. Of things he talked about in the offseason. They wanted to run more plays than they did a year ago. the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got and they're averaging right close to 75 a plays a game so far. And the percentage splits is about 50-50. It's pretty close to it in terms of running, rushing attempts, and passing attempts. So. so we'll see if that, that trend will continue. Or, once again, if, if you're not able to have that balance, do you start to... Veer off of the balance in this particular game. If, for example, if you're not able to run the ball, do you just stick with it, or do you just like, okay, we're getting some things going in the passing game, do you start making some moves to really just kind of offset the balance and go to a little bit more imbalance with more passes or rushing rushes based on how things are going? Again, that's just an adjustment. Because once again, you go in hoping for that balance. So D.R. King right there, big runs from him. He just got sacked, but right there he's able to get the first down on that run. The read option pulls it back, holds it. I think that's a good sign, and that's going to be something, again, you saw in the first game. Maybe you could have held the ball a little bit more. I think there was a lot of discussion about that. So in a game like this, you certainly want him making as many good decisions as possible with that oh my goodness Henry's having a monster game my goodness this guy is incredible he is all over the field he feels like he's always in the backfield making big plays so gotta keep your eye on number five Derek ducks under that that could have been a huge hit pulls it back so that'll be interesting too because that's that's something where Clemson's speed could be an issue because Miami would like to do that that play right there where they Fake the handoff on an option play, Protection. and then Dierre can choose a run pass option out of that. And there's a lot of moving parts. A lot of things have to be get done in a hurry, and Dierre is able to do that because he has good footwork, a good understanding of his reads. But Clemson has different speed, and it certainly could put more pressure on that. And maybe those developed, long developing plays might be a little bit tougher to execute. And try and close this game out. It's but just something to watch for in the game. Third and 13, this is crazy. Miami's an interesting spot. I think you've got to get like eight yards or something. Oh my goodness. They get the first down. Brevin Jordan coming up huge. So Deer King all of a sudden is 11 for 12. Brevin with a huge catch. I was thinking if it's third and long like that, with the way you are, you're about on the 45. You know, if you get seven, eight yards, maybe you go for it, even if it's third and that third and five kind of range. But this is a good way of not having that discussion, but go ahead and get in the first down. It's across the marker, and then Brevin does the rest. And I think that, I, I know I've said it quite a bit, but just your best players have to play well and to have your chance at an upset. King and Jordan on offense. 
You'd like to see Harris have some good plays. There's Henry once again. Henry looks like a max out player on this game. My goodness, I don't know what his rating is, but my goodness. To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, we're talking about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Still giving carries to Harris. Tyler Davis Davis on, the, to break off a big one on a tackle, so third and side. seven. This is very interesting. I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out. Ball on the 20. See who they're going to go at right here. See Harley goes in motion. Go ahead and give him the ball. He's going to get it. Oh, my goodness. Did he get that? Oh, fourth and inches. What do you do? I would be very, I'd be very curious to see this situation. I'm very curious if you guys are still, if you want to chime in on a coaching decision, what do you do fourth and inches? You got the number one team in the country on the ropes. Do you send out Jose here for a 30 yard field goal? Or do you go for it at fourth and inches? Try to get that touchdown. No room to find to get upfield. I would definitely be curious to know what you guys are thinking right there. So if you guys are following along at this point in the game, drop in the comments. Let me know what you would do. I definitely want to have that discussion. Either way, Miami's got a good lead here. So 17-13, things have really changed for Miami here in the second half. Trevor Lawrence certainly has the potential and to come up with a big drive and plenty of time left. Still four minutes left. Everybody's got all their timeouts. I think going into this game, if Miami faces this situation, up four with four minutes to go, you take that all day, regardless of how things get there. I think that happens a lot in sports where a lot of people get all worked up about how things are going. But going to it, into a game, would you take a certain situation? If you think of it like that and kind of forget about how you got there, regardless of how it ended up, if you maybe you got up, who knows, maybe you got up big and lost a big lead. Maybe it's a situation like that. Or maybe you don't like how your team is playing, but you still have a lead. Regardless, I think if you get to a point in a game like this late, you just take for what it is. You're up four. Four to go. I think if you're Miami, you would be very pleased with that going into the game. Total yards, so Miami's definitely picked that up. They've been down quite a bit, but they're get, definitely closing in a closer number. Oh, my goodness. If you want to talk about an X factor, that might be it, just because there's a lot of attention on the other spots on the field. But if they're able to get the tight ends going, you see Tall Care, you saw Galloway earlier catching passes. You can see Zach McLeod, the linebacker, and then Bradley Jennings is another one. Both of those guys would be the ones most likely lined up against the tight ends. And maybe there's a way for Clemson to find some production in their offense at that position. That might be something to watch for the way I'm kind of seeing this thing unfold. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. They are going to him again. Once again, they just have multiple guys that can make plays. So, okay, so Lawrence 21 and 25. Oh my goodness, Chalk is having a huge game. Good to see Roche make that tackle there. Always like when the defensive linemen are able to get off the line and go make tackles. Out on the sideline, show their speed a little bit, just that pursuit ability. This guy's staying locked in there. Nice pass breakup. DJ Ivy, look at DJ. That's a nice play. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. So third and six here, ball at the 47, 239 left. Everybody has all their timeouts left. Still plenty of time either way. Knowing each other's moves all game Third and six. And Gotta pay attention to tight ends. And they've held them in check on the For sure. Board. Oh my goodness, to Corey Couch. Are you kidding me? To Corey Couch. 
Oh you my goodness, that'd be the, the biggest, biggest play of his career if he pulls that, that off in the game. A sack like late in the fourth quarter, down trying down to hold on to a lead oh, no, on a third a down play. That is crazy. Every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt. That would be crazy for sure. So fourth and thirteen. Two twenty left. I assume. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. Even though they got the timeout. See, I think I thought maybe you'd punt it and play with timeouts, but they're gonna go for it now. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! That's Frank Klassen Jr. doing it to the hometown team. That would be so crushing if that's what happens. Man, huge play by Ladson and Lawrence. That would be so frustrating to watch in the game because you're looking at a potential upset and to give up a big play like that. And now Clemson's in prime position for a big play and I mentioned Latson's ability to go downfield earlier in the game because I watched I was at nearly every one of his one games as a senior there at South Dade and so I've seen his ability in person man if he does it in this game that'd be crushing for Miami okay oh he's got this oh my goodness Nice work to get did he get tackled? Outblades Jr. Was that a clothesline? Maybe is that what it was? Really is that what happened? On that one. I mean, they this game is crazy. Okay, so this is fourth quarter. I feel like there's away. a little bit this some Loki yeah, drama going on here. That was a crazy tackle by Blades. Okay, ball at the one. He's back to throw. He's all the time in the world. So there it is. And oh my goodness, of course, chalk with a big play. And this guy. They have, he's got if, if it's if he's not on their scouting report he has to be now you've got to watch for 25 in the game saw it here first my goodness he's having a huge game and the touchdown okay so Mayan 116 I didn't know what the, so Miami has 116 left all timeouts left so the extra point is good okay so Miami oh that's crushing they give up that huge play but you know 116 left you only need a field goal you like your field goal kicker once again mention the 57 yarder so with that maybe you're thinking you've got to get to at least the 40 but you have De'Ari King all the timeouts This is exactly what Derek wanted when he came to Miami, the opportunity to play in big games. The ability to go to head-to-head -to -head with one of the nation's best teams and the top-ranked team at this point. So very curious to see how this is going to go. I, I think if you're looking at it, you definitely got to get to, got to look at nine. Definitely got to figure out a way to get Brevin the ball. And one of the receivers, you've seen Harley and Wiggins make big plays already in this game. And there's another one. Who was that? D. Wiggins. He's having a monster game, so we got to pay attention to eight in the, in the game on Saturday. He catches 86 yards for D. Wiggins. Ball all, already up to the 48. That's a great play because you don't want to get stuck in a drive and you're trying to get downfield and your first couple plays are are going for no gain so to be able to get that already get your offense on the move in a crucial part of the game I think is always important now D'Arc on the run and he's got yards get down oh my goodness the juke move D'Arc King always does that he can go down on a slide or he can do the juke you don't know what's going to happen sometimes he will take a hit sometimes he won't sometimes he'll evade you and you saw right there on that play, that was a huge run. Got to see who he got on that juke move. Oh, he got one right there. Oh, my goodness. That's the cornerback. Mentioned him earlier. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Nice play by Derek. Okay, so ball on the 30. So they're definitely in field goal range already. But certainly you want to get closer. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not good. There goes that man once again. Him two tackles, or six tackles and two sacks. I feel like a lot of those tackles have been behind the line of scrimmage. Five out here looking like he's going to be a problem inside this game. 
As they'll stop him with a little Got a great look at the stadium right here. The Don't need it all back at once. But so ball on that 37. Second like and 17. A couple down. positive plays here would be huge. The delay. Here's it's a solid run. And this will go as a gain of seven as so he pick gets up to seven the here. Line. Okay, so 20 seconds left. They are not calling any timeouts. You them yeah, this, this, situation. <laughs> this is frustrating to, to watch right here. Look at this clock management. So ball's on the 30-yard line. Okay, so here's now they call timeout. I would expect to see some pressure here. Yeah, obviously that's a little, little, little bit of a glitch here. Okay, so they're going to go for Okay, 11 seconds left. <laughs> Okay, so that was an interesting decision right there. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Now here's another carry for Harris. Oh my goodness, Cameron Harris has been quiet most of the game, and, and now he just reels off this crazy run. And now the they're probably just trying to get a few more yards and then so call timeout to get to line left. up the field goal unit. But look at this. This is a really short field goal. And the clock it's gonna be a 29 yarder to send the game to overtime. Five, five seconds, seconds left. left. He's got to make this. I would hate for Miami fans to go down with a crushing loss with a missed field goal. I hope that doesn't happen. And for the Let's see it right here. Oh, so look at this. Field goal unit comes out here. And the so Dabo is trying to ice the kicker here. Is called with five seconds left. And, and another one. Okay, got it. Field goal unit comes out here. And the clock will now At least they were quick. We didn't have to wait and watch the, five seconds left. all the time go there. So here it is. Yeah, look. Don't worry, the offense is not going to go and out there. The second time tonight, this field goal unit comes so out here, here we go. And his kick is so good. he makes a kick, but and real quick, drop in the comments if you're a little bit seconds. nervous right there. If all of a sudden you're like, man, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm low-key nervous about this kick, you, that means you're totally invested in the Miami Hurricanes, you love this team, and I know some of you are a little bit nervous, even though it's only a simulation, and that just means I know that you guys are into this, and we'll just see how this thing shakes out. So. Certainly looks like this game is going to go to overtime. And the way this works, it's not going to be the college overtime rules. It's the NFL rules. That's just the way this game works. Fitting for what's been a tight ball so you're not going to get the ball. You're not going to trade possessions, that kind of thing. It's going to be the NFL rules. This is fielded a couple yards you know, first possession, and touchdown, field goal, the whole thing. So just take a knee and they'll start things out all over 25, 25 here. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to I assume they're just going to come out and kneel it. Send this game to overtime. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Try to right up at the line of scrimmage. Something incredible here. We're likely headed to overtime. And just a couple of scenarios here to keep oh, so in mind. To go with the run. Okay, really there. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the worst case scenario. What would you do? So that's a. You cannot end the game on that. That's crazy. So that's. Oh my. Is that Amari Carter? Okay. So he gets a solid run, and then you get the 15 yards on top of that, and you get the extra play. Oh my god. Did I have, all of a sudden, right here at the 40 yard line, this is a Hail Mary. Trevor can certainly throw it this far. Oh my goodness. No way. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's going to overtime, but certainly that would be a worst case scenario because. He picked up so many yards on one second and then got an extra play. That would have been crazy, a crazy drive if they pulled that off. So once again, kickoff is going to be huge here. Let's see who wins the toss. I know this has been a discussion on the opening uh, possession. The, the coin toss to start the game. And if you win the toss, if you're Miami, what do you want to do? Do you want to kick off? Are you hoping to get the ball to start the game. I think most people, I think most coaches typically like to send their defense out first. And for me, I, I'm the opposite. Regardless if it's a big game or not, I always like having the offense so out there first. Game here as the kicks away. That's just my preference, but I definitely That's understand why. But anyways, if you have a this one, potential, so and that only, obviously only has to do with the back. opening one, but... Okay, so Miami's defense has to come up big here. here. They, they get a stop. You want to hopefully get a, th a three and out early. 
force a punt, get good field position, and then put your own drive together. Field scoring a touchdown wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. scored on their last drive. They'll take that lead. The Miami got the field goal to tie it. Okay, so we got total yards. Both teams doing a pretty good job. That's right. Oh oh my. Okay, you got to get some. Oh my goodness. That's at the. Oh my goodness. Corey could not catch up. That is crazy. That is awful way to end this. That is too much speed, but that juke move is crazy. Are you kidding me? That is so tough. And they're going to replay this. Watch this juke move. Goes inside and then goes through on outside. I really thought Couch was going to get him. It looked like he had the angle and then just Travis pulled away. That's crazy. A little bit quiet of a game. And then all of a sudden he breaks that out. And that's his potential. That move is crazy. I don't know who got juked there, but my goodness. Tough loss for Miami there in it. I think you guys enjoyed the fact that it went down to the wire. Once again, that's not the... The overtime rules that college football would use. And Derek is not happy, all the guys, but man, that's a tough way. But hopefully you guys still, I know it's hard to say, but hopefully you still enjoyed it. Interesting things to watch for, I think, um, in, in the game. And talked about some of the keys for Miami in this game as well. And once again, we'll have plenty of coverage leading up to the game and then after the game with reaction from players and coaches after the game. So be sure to check out InsideTheU.com. Just want to thank everybody for watching. You know, thank you for subscribing, hitting that like button. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at InsideTheU. Just thanks again and take care.